even though The Lord of the Flies is a fascinating and captivating story by its own merit, taking the time to understand the background information, the motivations of the author, and the symbolism and topics found within the text can really help us understand as we strive to dig deeper into this work. So to begin, Lord of the Flies was written by William Golding in 1954. In regards to the year this was written, it might be important and relevant to consider what just happened right before 1954, whether that was 10 years prior or even a couple decades. Think about that as we look at the rest of this background information. William Golding was a British novelist um, who fought in World War II. He fought in the Royal Navy and even participated in the invasion of Normandy on D-Day, so that famous battle there. After the war ended, though, he returned to teaching and writing and eventually even won and was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. Understanding Golding's role in the war itself is extremely significant in understanding why he wrote this text in the first place. After writing Lord of the Flies, Golding was quoted as saying, It was simply what seemed sensible for me to write after the war when everyone was thanking God that they weren't Nazis. I'd seen enough to realize that every single one of us could be Nazis. Keep this quote in mind as we continue on with the background information. What are we capable of as human beings, even if we think we are on the right side? So continuing on talking about William Golding's inspiration, the reason for writing Lord of the Flies, we know that he went back from the war to continue teaching, and Golding once, as recorded, allowed his class of boys total freedom in a debate. Now, this might have been an initially great idea to give students uh, the ability to speak their mind and do whatever they want, but he had to intervene pretty quickly as mayhem soon broke out interesting, again, thinking about what he was just quoted as saying. Also, we talked about his experiences of war. We know how brutal war can be. We know that war brings out the worst in people, the worst in nations, and human nature has to be questioned in wartime or even directly after the war. Remember, this was written in 1954, still enough time after the war to have that on our minds or on William Golding's mind. As far as the plot and setting goes for Lord of the Flies, William Golding was not uh, completely original in this idea of boys being trapped on the island. In fact, the Coral Island, written about a hundred years prior in 1857 by R.M. Ballantyne, also talked about three boys being stranded on an island, guess what, during wartime. Not only do the Lord of the Flies and the Coral Island share similar settings and plot points, but if you look carefully, we notice that at least two of the characters are very similar to the names of the ones in our own story, Lord of the Flies, Ralph and Jack. So William Golding is telling us something here, drawing connections between the Coral Island and the Lord of the Flies. What that connection is exactly is an example of parody. Now parody, if you haven't heard of it before, is an imitation of the style of a particular writer, artist, or genre with deliberate exaggeration for usually comic effect. Parody is a type of literature which we see taking place here in Lord of the Flies, whereas Coral Island was very optimistic in the ways that uh, boys would turn out if left on their own on an island, resulting in their rescue, but also fun and adventurous times. The Lord of the Flies mocks that idea. William Golding says, that is not what would happen, and I'm going to write a story about what I think reality would prove would happen if boys were stranded on the island. That was what makes this a parody, taking similar ideas but turning them on their heads, and the result is 
the novel we hold in our hands, The Lord of the Flies. And that might cause you to stop and think, why was William Golding such a downer? Why didn't he think that boys could have a fun time on the island on their own, explore, survive, and be rescued in the end with no problems? Well, it's because he's also inspired by the philosophical questions about human nature, like those of Thomas Hobbes. You see, Thomas Hobbes was an English philosopher during the 17th century who argued all sorts of questions, viewed man in a very realistic way, but this is what he said. Things like, man is by nature selfishly individualistic. Man is by nature selfish. Also, man is constantly at war with other men. That never stops. That's the plight of human nature. We're always going to be at war. Also, the fear of violent death is the sole motivation to create civilizations. Thomas Hobbes thought only because we're afraid of death, we're going to work together. Finally, he also said that men need to be controlled by absolute sovereignty to avoid brutish behavior. Deep down, Thomas Hobbes believes that we all have the capability of evil, but only by being civil, by having rule and authority, can we tame that beast within. So, knowing that William Golding was influenced by Thomas Hobbes' philosophies, it only makes sense to hear him say things like, the theme of Lord of the Flies is an attempt to trace the defects of society back to, guess what, the defects of human nature. Society is only flawed, William Golding says, because humans are flawed. So, what are the themes of Lord of the Flies then? Well, that's going to be for you to determine. If you thought I was going to give them to you, you're wrong. But I will give you some topics that are addressed in Lord of the Flies that we need to consider and can use to build our themes. Here we go. We're about to read of survival, of power, of things like leadership and civilization. Not only that, but we also have savagery taking place here and innocence. Don't forget about human nature, like we already mentioned, and also fear, good, and evil. All of these things are going to play a role in Lord of the Flies. And it's going to be up to us to figure out how do we turn these into a theme so we understand William Golding's purpose in writing this novel in the first place. So here's your goal. At the end of this video, here's what you're going to do. Using one of the topics or ideas that we have above, develop a theme that might apply to the novel. Don't forget to use your template if you need help, but be ready to share these in class tomorrow.